Now that the aircraft is ready to leave, all we're waiting for is our VIP. Definitely, Minister. Sir. Minister, may I take care of your luggage, your briefcase, the coat, sir? Okay, you're welcome. In case of emergency, the primary exit will be the one you went through. In case it's a block, we proceed over the wing exit, the situation because behind Mister. Okay, today Minister will be flying into Washington, one hour, 15 minutes in flight, and you will be served a hot meal. The area that has the flight steward to prepare his meal remains very restricted, which involves planning and organization. Minister, may I offer you a beverage? Here you go, Minister. You're welcome. Excuse me, Minister, I have to store the table. We'll be uh, starting this end shortly. I will take your glasses back. Please fasten your seatbelt and uh, we start this end. Have a nice evening, uh, Minister. Sir? Thank you. Thank you. It was a great flight. Now that the VIP have vacated the aircraft, the flight is over. This is where we go into the final phase, which is clean up. Which means put everything back to where it belongs and be ready for the next flight. Sergeant Racine finally logs his flying time and his mission is complete. This is one of the one of the few jobs that you get selected to come here. And if you're a successful candidate, the rewards are second to none. They just keep coming and coming and I believe that's gonna be following you for the rest of your career. There's not too many people out there in the military world or even in the civilian world that can sit back and say, I've done that. I flew around the world. I'm not saying the job is gonna be all smiles from sunrise to sundown. There's a lot of long days. There's lots of, uh, when you go into these foreign places and you have to provide a meal. And uh, there's the language barrier that you have to get by. But knowing that after you leave that place, you have you did successful and you did a successful mission, you tend to forget about the long hours and the, uh, the aggravation you have along the way. And when the, um, when the uh, Prime Minister of Canada comes off the plane and says, thanks a lot, Dave, that was great. It, it all, it's all worth it. At the, at the end. For a cook working on a Challenger is certainly not the same as on the ship, a field kitchen, or even a conventional kitchen. The challenge, the experience, and the gratitude that this job brings is never to be forgotten. Here you have it, the possibility to bring forward your capability, your determination, and most of all, the passion of your trade. This is Sergeant Daniel Susi for Army News, Ottawa. I'm Corporal Lynn Bronson and I'm a cook here at uh, CFS Alert. Here it's a fairly large kitchen for the amount of people that we're feeding. It's uh, pretty well equipped for being up here in, in isolation. But other than that, most of our equipment is the exact same and we work the exact same uh, rotation and times that we would back south, down south. Sometimes we have to ration our food, sometimes we have to get a little bit creative with our food. At home there's really no challenge. If I'm out of something then they can go get it at a store, they can use something else. Here we're stuck with what we've got, but uh, our milk, a lot of it is frozen to preserve it a little bit longer, and we get, uh, get quite a bit when we do get it. Sometimes it takes three, four weeks to get an, another herc with food on it, and sometimes it takes a pretty good imagination to throw together a meal with very little food, fresh food. We've got a lot of um, frozen, a lot of prepared food, but to give everybody fresh food, vegetables, soups, and stuff that is fresh. It takes a, a good imagination when we're running low. A lot of them will um, ask us for special requests and we have no problem if we have it in the freezer or in the fridge. We like to give it to them because it's not like you can go out to McDonald's 
or you know down the road to a, a restaurant or anything. So we like to accommodate them as much as we can. I've been here since uh, December 17th. When I got here, it was really cold and really dark. And now that the sun is out, 24 hours, it's warmed up a little bit, but more storms now. Right now we serve uh, between 80, 85 people. The amount will go up during box top to about 130 people. So every day, 80 meals, 85 meals, three times a day. I like cooking. I like um, serving people, um, helping them out. And uh, I always learn something new every day. It's rewarding because I, it's the morale for the people. If you don't like your food, then your morale goes down. So I always thought of as us as the first line of morale to the, to the guys. Although operational rations have been in place for a long time, it's important to know that they're based on high-level standards and requirements. Nevertheless, many that consume these rations may wonder how they're made and what's in them. I met with project manager Mrs. Belanger Drapeau. The uh, main point is the quality and the attention that is brought to the uh, manufacturing of the components as well as the assembly. What you have first is that you have an inspection that is done at the supplier, the manufacturer, and in some instances also you have product that is sent our, our evaluation center where we do compare the production against the tender samples that have been approved by taste panels that are done every year. And then when the product is delivered here, the company will verify the quality the quantity of product that is delivered and also the outside quality, uh, quality for instance if the packet is well sealed if the packet is well printed if it corresponds to the, the menu that uh, they have received uh, the uh, outside quality if there's any stains on the outside packet this location is very important as far as the quality the last quality verification we're doing even if you're skeptical about the contents of those little gray bags, you can rest assured they meet your nutritional standards. Soldiers should know that they have input as to what the contents of menu items will be. We do have field trials. Uh, we try to have them about every year where we bring new products to uh, the soldiers. And according to their uh, rating, we will include uh, the items uh, on the menu. If it's not uh, satisfactory, sometimes we take the comments that we receive and uh, we go back to the uh, supplier and ask them to improve their product. Also, we do have a taste panel that are done yearly at the Evaluation Center in Ottawa, where we will evaluate each item that will be uh, pro uh, purchased for the next year of assembly. And this is when uh, a product is accepted, that we keep samples of what has been accepted by a group of 12 uh, military personnel, and then we will compare the uh, production against uh, that approved uh, sample. What happens is we have a list of uh, menus or entrees uh, that have uh, been approved either before or now that are approved uh, from the, uh, the field. And from that list, I will select items from year to year so that we do provide a variety of, uh, of items. Mrs. Belanger Drapeau is always searching for new ways to improve operational rations. For soldiers. There's, I think, two major improvements. First of all, you have the retort pouch, which is the uh, foil pouch or uh, the bag uh, in the, the, that you put in water. That is the main uh, improvement over the cans. It is similar to a can, but it's much more flexible. And also, because of the new technology, because it is thin, it provides us the possibility to offer a very good uh, variety of uh, product. And the next one, I would say, is the bread, the pouch bread that uh, had been included in about 10 years ago. There's a lot of people, it's a collaboration of many individual companies, uh, government and the uh, personnel that brings the uh, rations and we hope to the quality that the soldier is expecting and we really try to satisfy our main clients which is the soldier. Obviously a good natured soldier will tell you that when eating operational rations for an extended period of time, nothing beats a hot meal prepared by the unit cooks. This is Sergeant Craig Reed, Army News.
today we're prepping for a mess dinner for uh, the CO of Service Tying and all the senior officers and the brigade commander. There will be six cooks working the dinner. It's a small dinner, it's between 80 and 90 people and it'll be held tomorrow night. So what we're doing is we're doing oysters and lemon butter and garlic and what we're going to do is put them in the oven, top them with a little bit of mozzarella cheese, not overcook them. We're hoping the shell is going to retain uh, quite a bit of the heat at the same time and they'll come out good and hot. They'll be put on a bed of uh, alfalfa sprouts on a medium sized plate. Uh, this is where we're going to prepare our salads. We'll put a, a, a three tier layer salad in that. It's a, uh, a mandarin salad with uh, a raspberry vinaigrette dressing. So the guys made the bowls this morning out of uh, uh, the uh, pita shell. Uh, they deep fry it. We'll garnish it with uh, red uh, uh, onions and uh, the mandarins yep. and then top it off with a raspberry vinaigrette and that will be their salad with breadsticks on the side. Corporal Samard's looking at a garnish that we're using which will be grilled pineapple uh, on the charbro so that you can see the the uh, markings on it. We're just prepping today so we'll spend about six hours just on the prep and we'll break it into two teams. One team will come back here pick up everything that we can pre uh, prepare while we're over there and the other team will start work here on the rest of the products. There's some people that have dietary needs that we have to meet. The plates will be warmed prior to going out. Cold will be served cold. Uh, we have a Zorbet, which is a, a sherbet with the rim glasses, which is to cleanse your palate after a fish to a meat course. That has to be cold, so we don't want that sitting on the table for five minutes before it goes to the diner. And the products that we're doing in that, we're trying to raise the food to give it more height and depth in the plates. When we start off doing our dinners, we always do a, a basic guide for the cooks themselves of what the ingredients we want in each of the products. Mm -hmm. This is a sheet that Master Corporal Pine has done up. So no matter who comes in, they have a general idea of what goes in the product, if not better than general. And then from there on, it's up to your expertise and whatnot to show how you want it presented. This here, they're repairing two types of rice. One's a wild, a wild grain and the other one's a balsamic. We had them high in the, in the dishes. But what's going to happen when we get them on the plate, it's going to overwhelm the plate. There'll be too much product that we want. So I've asked the guys to cut them down to a little bit better portional size because our pork is going to be standing and we want the pork to stand higher than the rice. If the cook can help you out, just mention it to him. Uh, something went wrong. The cook will be more than happy to give you a hand doing it or he'll fix it for you. We've really got two aims in what we're trying to do here. The, uh, the primary aim is to promote the Canadian Forces and, and try and open up the Canadian Forces to the, the corporate Kingston and the Kingston community in general. Uh, take away some of that mystique uh, between defence and the civilian community. But secondly, we saw a, a great opportunity to also help one of those very, very significant support agencies that we have here in Kingston, by the way of Kingston Family Resource Centre. So, dual aimed, uh, each of them are equally as important. Uh, and hopefully tonight, with the, the great crowd that we've gathered here, nearly 250 people, uh, there'll be a lot of funding support to go to KMFRC after the event. I've been assigned as a kitchen manager since the uh, July 2002. This is one of the best places for a senior NCO to, to be at. I have a Sergeant Adam Mercier that comes from uh, 5 CSS Saint Jean, and I have Master Corporal Moisin, Pierre Moisin from uh, 5 GSS Valcarte. We were trying to create, it was to have typically a Canadian menu, but with an European influence, meaning that the new flavors, new tendons, new uh, new presentations, you know, and so, and I think we have achieved that. I mean, you can expand your expertise and you can go so far 
beyond what you can even imagine. And the only way to achieve that, I think, is to personalize your product. If you had on a little touch at the end of it, and then you make it your own, you know, that's what it's going to make you totally be distinguished from.